of operations is not a math topic. It is something that pervades all of mathematics. So it's not something that you, you learn for a chapter and then move on from. Order of operations, always in effect, always in effect. Every time you do a problem, you need to follow the standard order of operations. What is it? Basically, basic rule is do more powerful operations first, okay? So the most powerful operations that you're gonna deal with this year are exponents, all right? Exponents and square roots, which are a kind of exponent you will eventually discover, okay? Exponents and roots are the most powerful, and then at a level below them, it's got multiplication and division. And the lowest level operations that you have, the least powerful operations that you have are addition and subtraction this year, okay? So order of operations says I do these things first, then these things, then these things, All right? And at each level, I work from left to right. So we've got a numerical expression right here. And the most powerful operation right now is two to the third power. So that means two times two times two is what I do with a calculator or two carat three. Uh, and you're gonna come out with eight when you do that operation. All right, two times two is four times another two is eight. All right, now for this topic, for this skill, I would like for you to do just one operation at a time. You can use a calculator to do the operation, but just one operation at a time. And then what you're gonna do with the rest of the operations is just bring them down. Okay, so we didn't deal with this yet, nor this, nor this. And now looking at my red line, what's the most powerful operation there? Multiplication. So that's what we'll do next. Five times eight. Five times eight is 40. And we're bringing everything else down. Seven plus eight minus. Okay. Finally, at this, at this level, addition and subtraction have the same amount of power. So we just work from left to right. Seven plus eight is 15. And 15 minus 40 is negative 25. Okay, so my all of this simplifies down to negative 25. Now, after you do all of those steps, if you want to check, am I correct? You can grab any kind of calculator that does its own order of operations and type the entire line in to double check. So 7 plus two to the third minus five times eight, enter. And I don't even know if you can see this, but negative 25 matches what I have there. I checked it. I usually put a check when I say I've checked something. Um, and I move on to the next problem, comfortable, confident that I did it right. If I had made a mistake, my calculator would tell me, you made a mistake, and then I could look back through these lines and see if I could find the mistake uh, where I went out of order. All right, so let's look at another one of these. 2 times 9 minus 18 divided by 3 times 7 squared. All right, the most powerful operation, squared. 7 times 7 is 49. Everything else, I'll rewrite. Now I've got three operations that are at the same level, times divided by times. So I will work from left to right with them. Two times nine, 18.
six times 49, six 50 cent pieces is $3 minus six pennies is two ninety four. Eighteen minus two ninety four is negative two hundred seventy six. All right. Now, I don't actually know if that's right, so double check. Check this whole line in. All right. There's a couple places down at the bottom that I could have made mistakes. Two times nine minus eighteen divided by three times seven squared when i say type the whole line in that's what i mean type the whole line okay not step by step not left to right otherwise your calculator will not give you a correct answer all right cool checked off excellent That's how order of operations works. I know that's review for you. Sometimes we want to do operations in an order that is not most powerful to least powerful. We'd like an operation with lesser power to happen before an operation with greater power. So if that is the case, what we can do is use grouping symbols, parentheses, brackets, braces. Uh, these things, when we're using them, all serve the same function, they group terms together. Okay, the only reason that we sometimes use different ones is like in this situation, I've got two sets, one inside of the other. Uh, so it helps me distinguish where is the beginning and ending of each pair of grouping symbols. Okay, when you have grouping symbols in a problem, you work from the inside out. So the farthest inside, right now is three minus 10, okay? And I'll work my way out. Three minus 10 is negative seven. That's gonna be squared plus 11 divided by three. Okay, that's the first move, second move. Now I'm inside still of the brackets. I have two operations happening, power and plus. Power is more powerful, so I'll do that first. Negative seven times negative seven is 49. Positive 49 plus 11. Divide by three. Okay. Still working inside, 49 plus 11 is 60. All right, and finally 60 divided by three is 20. All right, couple other grouping symbols that we have to be aware of. These grouping symbols actually perform operations as well as grouping things together. In the center, we've got a square root or a radical, okay? This effectively, even if it doesn't show it, groups together everything that's underneath of it. You have to be careful to know when the square root ends. All right, this eight is not included, okay? And then square root also has an operation. It does the opposite of squaring, okay? So if I have, 9 squared equal to 81, right? The square root of 81 would say what number times itself equals me, okay? We could actually have 9 or negative 9 as answers there. All right, all the way on the right-hand side, we've got absolute value. Absolute value groups things together that are inside of it, and it always returns a positive value. Okay, always a positive value. 
So if this G in here was a nine, two minus nine is negative seven, but absolute value would convert that to positive seven, right? If there was a zero in here for G, two minus zero is two, keep it positive, right? Absolute value, straight up and down lines. Do not confuse absolute value with brackets. Brackets are straight up and down, but they have corners. All right, and this last one, fraction bar. A fraction bar sets up two sets of parentheses that are understood, all right? There are understood parentheses around the numerator and understood parentheses around the denominator. And then it also, after you finish simplifying what is in the denominator, after you finish simplifying what's in the numerator, acts as a division symbol, and then you divide those things. Okay, so those are three other types of grouping symbols that we're going to deal with this year. Piece evaluating algebraic expressions. 3x squared minus 2y plus 1 divided by 4. Looks more complicated than the stuff that came before because of those letters. Is really not. There's just one extra step. If I ask you to evaluate an expression in Algebra 1, I'm going to give you the values for x and y. So I'll say something like, evaluate that expression when x equals negative 3 and y equals 5. Okay? Then all you got to do, first step, substitute, replace each letter with its value. So that looks like this. Rewrite everything 3 times negative three squared. All right, when I'm substituting, especially negatives, I usually put them in parentheses. Helps uh, alleviate mistakes that could happen. Minus two times five, because y is five, plus one, all of that over four, okay? So I substituted the values that they gave me for the variables, and then it's just like a order of operations problem, like we've done before. So step by step, exponents happen first. Three times, negative three times negative three is positive nine, minus understood parentheses around the numerator of a fraction. So I'm gonna start working with this. Two times five is 10 plus one over four. All right, so I did actually two steps there. All right, but they're separated from each other by the lowest level operation, subtraction, so they're never gonna touch each other. All right, we got multiplication three times. Nine is 27 minus, keep working this top part of the fraction, 10 plus one is 11 over four. Two more operations left. Division happens before subtraction. So we got 27 minus 11 fourths is almost three. 2.75. Again, that's something you could do with a calculator. And last step, 27 minus 2.75 is... 24.25. All right, final answer, 24.25. Okay, so same as doing an order of operations problem, just the first step is replace each variable with whatever they tell you to. If you want to try one, see how you're doing before you roll into class, hit pause, try this one. Hit pause because I'm gonna just roll through and do it. And then when you uh, when you have finished, unpause. Check check your answer against mine.